Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to do a video talking about a uh, special kind of charging. So I made a video last weekend where I drove from my hometown, which is Prince George, this area right here, you can see on the map, um, I have plug share loaded. I drove up Highway 97 and I went all the way to Dawson Creek. and. I'll link the video down below for anybody who cares about that. But today, what I did was I thought, what would it take to drive from Dawson Creek all the way up to Whitehorse, Yukon? You know, just curious. And through that exercise, um, you know, before today, if you were to look on PlugShare and look at this highway, um, these three didn't exist. I actually did a bunch of research and found some RV uh, campsites that had um, 30 amp service. Basically nothing north of Fort Nelson that I could find has anything more than 30 amp 110 volt service. But at least there's something. So I've added these to PlugShare. I've contacted, you know, if I click on this one here in Fort Nelson, uh, this one is Triple G hideaway RV park and campground and I have the phone over there basically for all these ones that I've added they only have 30 amp you need this special TT30 plug or at least that's that's the type of plug that those campsites have for 30 amps it's a standard 30 amp uh, service and, and the key thing is you need a special adapter so I'm going to talk about that today so what am I talking about well Many of you will know this right plug. This is the NEMA 1450 plug. Very typical for EV owners. This is your modern 60 amp uh, type plug, or 50 amp plug, sorry, um, that you plug your dryer into. Well, this is an older um, style kind of dryer plug, RV plug, and it's only 30 amps. Now the difference between these two is that this one is 50 amps, 220 volts, a lot of people use this in their garage. This one is 30 amps and it's 110 volts, so it's a lot slower. And uh, I know if you're a Tesla owner, you, it's you know you don't you can't just buy the adapter for this plug on their website. They used to sell it, but they don't anymore. So let's talk about a few things here. So this is the kit I'm talking about, which I actually own this kit. And uh, you'll see in this kit there's these different plugs and you might be tempted to think this first one in the picture here, you, you might think, hey, that one, yeah, it looks close enough, right? This guy right here, I'll try to bring it close to the camera so you guys can see it. Well, you see that little notch right there? That's not a circle. And that's the problem. And not only that, but that plug this plug will not fit in this. They're, they're different plugs, they serve different purposes. It's not gonna work. So you might be tempted to get an adapter like this one here, right? They, these adapters are very cheap, $10.99, and there's other adapters, like I bought a typical RV adapter like you see in this picture up here that goes from NEMA 1450 to the TT30. But I have one of these, and I'm going to show you um, some video clips later on in this video how it doesn't work. There's something special that's required. So getting these adapters, you're going to scroll down here and take a look at one of the first comments. For example, not Tesla compatible, right? doesn't work. So just be aware of that. So what does work? Well, there's two solutions that I know that will work. One of them is this. You can order this from... Uh, there's a website that has this, but I just found this on uh, Amazon. And it's like a hundred bucks, so it is pretty expensive, but there's a few things. So not only is it the right plug, 
and it, it has, you know, it'll plug into your, your uh, portable Tesla adapter that you got with the car. But there's a very important thing to notice. And this is a safety item. No matter what adapter you get, you need to make sure when you do charge this 30 amp circuit, you need to set your car to 24 amps because that's 80% of the maximum capacity of the circuit and you're not supposed to go beyond that or you could trip the circuit, you could start a fire, all that kind of stuff. Using this native adapter, it'll automatically do that. So when you plug this into your Tesla portable charger and then you plug this into the outlet, it'll automatically cap it down to 24 amps and go from there. Now, this is another solution. Uh, it's also on Amazon, and you can find this pretty cheap in, in America. I think they have this at Home Depot, this adapter. And make sure when you find it, it says like it's EV compatible, electric vehicle compatible. But there's a lot of these kinds of this style that say EV compatible. The only thing is you need to make sure it says here, I think even in the uh, little notes, EV charging adapter set charging limit to 24 amps. So you have to do that manually. And if you forget, you could get into some problems. You know, maybe you'll trip the circuit at the RV site or um, who knows what. So that's a couple things to notice. How much uh, charge per hour will you get? Well, I've done some research and there's some people here that have made other YouTube videos. And you can see this person um, charging a Tesla at US campsite RV hookups, TT30 adapter. He's getting four kilowatts. Um, interestingly here, this must be like a Model S or something. You're not supposed to do this 30 amps. It may work, but it's again, it's a fire hazard. So that's one thing. But here you can see this person, Tesla charging while camping. They plugged in that adapter that I have purchased that I'll be uh, testing when I get it this weekend. You notice in the screenshot it capped it at 24 amps. Because he used the proper adapter, it automatically capped it, and he's getting seven miles per hour. And notice it's 120 volts, right? Seven miles per hour. So seven miles per, the, the key thing here is about four kilowatts. That's the approximate range. And if you look at the graph, um, four kilowatts is somewhere between 3.8 and 5.7. So you're gonna get, I don't know, probably 20 something kilometers an hour, something like that at best. Uh, it all depends. So that's just something to think about. Um, if you want to travel in places like in northern Canada and into the Yukon or northern BC and into the Yukon, um, like I said, I've added these campsites. Nothing was here before. So when you look at Plugshare, it looked like an impossible trip, but actually you can. And uh, these campsites only have that 30 amp, 120 volt outlet. So if you get that adapter, you're good to go. Now there is another thing that you could explore. There is a special adapter that I haven't, um, I don't have experience with where it goes from a NEMA 1450 and it splits into two T TT30 plugs. So if you were to go to RV site that has two 30 amp plugs, you could plug them in and then you could just use your normal NEMA 1450 and uh, you know, that, that would work as long as that adapter gave you enough amps, I suppose. But uh, I was speaking with someone on a Facebook group that said he had a device where that was working, but not all of these campsites, I don't know if any of these have the dual plugs at their, at their sites. I asked, some of the, I asked at least one of them and they said they didn't. So anyway, getting that single plug adapter, um, not this one, but this one or this one, should at least give you that option. So if you want to, say, drive up to Whitehorse, Yukon, you're definitely going to need something like that um, unless you do the just normal household plug, which then you're going to be for days and days at these individual campsites just to make it. So anyways, I will show my uh, video clips where I attempted to use just a normal adapter, you know, something like this, and you'll see how it just didn't work. All right, today we're gonna to do something a little different. This here is my portable 
Tesla adapter. What are we doing over here? I'm going to simulate something. Well, this is not really a simulation, it's real world, but what we got going here is the NEMA 1450 plug in the portable adapter. Then I have this adapter that's, uh, let's take a look at this so you can see. So this plug here is a 30 amp RV plug. So I have this adapter that goes from NEMA 1450 to this 30 amp plug so you can see some campsites. Yeah, I'm not going to twist it, but it looks like that. Okay, guys. And uh, what we're going to do, I can unplug this. Wow, that's tough. Just so you can see. NEMA 1450. And that's what this adapter is. I paid 30 bucks for this at uh, PV Mart in Dawson Creek. See my other video, I'll link below. Got it from there. But uh, I'm going to see with this adapter, with the 1450, if I can charge my Model 3. And if I can, that opens up some of those more remote RV sites in the north as an option for charging the Model 3. So I'm going to do that simulation now and see how that goes. All right, guys, what's going to happen? Everything's plugged in. We've got the, I think it's the TT30P adapter in there, like an old 30 amp RV plug adapter to NEMA 1450, portable adapter. And I mean, look at this craziness. I backed this in here in the backyard in a pretty tight spot, just enough that I should be able to reach this bad boy. Oh, come on. All right, guys, sorry I had opened the charge port in the car. And what happens here? Anything? I don't see anything happening. Let's make sure everything's plugged in. Ah, it is not. That's interesting. It's not on. I'm gonna need to check my fuse. Right, guys, sorry about this. I got one hand to do this, so you can see here I do have 30 amps. I have it on amps. I have 30 amps coming out of the plug, but for some reason it's not charging up through the adapter so I might you might need a special adapter I'll do some research into that all right guys so nothing here I checked with a voltmeter and I am getting 30 amps on each side of this NEMA 1450 adapter but the uh, Tesla portable charger doesn't seem to like the 30 amps and it's not doing anything you can see in here it says ready to charge, but it's like thinks there's no electricity coming, even though there is. So, based on that, and actually, you know what? Probably need to do something like this, right? Charge station not powered. I went down to 30 amps. I'm gonna try to replug it in and see if that changes anything. Let us see. Right, plug it back in. I don't see any light. I don't see anything going on. And it's just ready to charge, but can't do anything. I'm gonna try my corded Tesla adapter that has the hard-coded or hard-wired NEMA 1450 plug, see if we get anything different.